Thank you for doing this interview today. Um, my first question is, uh, tell me about your uh, company services. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so 3D Cityscapes offers the most hyper-realistic 3D interactive environments in the world. So we operate in several different industries. One of those industries in, is in property development. We create immersive environments in order to showcase, market, and sell future property developments, anything from condos to townhomes to master plan communities. And we have a very good name in the industry. We're doing this worldwide for customers. Also, we create um, super engaging and interactive digital twins, everything from cities to airports, to nuclear power plants, to ports, almost anything you can imagine doing a digital twin of. So that's the space in which we play in. And really our significant um, trademark in the industry is the quality of the experiences that we create. We love to create hyper-realistic environments that really engage people and uh, create this feeling of being immersed into the 3D interactive uh, environment that we create. There's a lot of people, like the players around. Uh, how you guys are differentiating from other uh, people like in the market and what's your strength? Um, some of the things that differentiate us is we're creating um, a tremendous amount of infrastructure within our team and procedural elements in our foundation of our platform that will allow us to quickly scale a lot faster than normal studios. So we've invested a lot of time in our AI platform, which is going to allow us to build cities you know, while we're sleeping, basically. And we've invested a lot of time in bringing on some of the best people in the world in order to create these procedural tools and our whole platform so we can easily roll out whole cities or eventually even whole countries, right, as digital twins. Also, a unique thing that separates us in the industry is we've partnered with another company, which we have, you know, some ownership in, and we have our own streaming platform. So very much like Google Stadia, we actually can stream our applications that normally require like a $4,000 computer. We can stream those through our servers at a fraction of the cost of other people. More, normally people would have to buy a four to $6,000 computer, put it on Amazon, and the cost could be upwards of 10 to $20,000 a month. Whereas our cost is basically one twentieth of that cost because we have our own streaming system. So we can allow people to log in on a website and go right into our applications and be fully immersed into this 3D interactive environment. No download, no expensive computer, any device anywhere in the world. What what are you guys thinking in, in terms of midterm uh, um, planning? Like let's say investment wise, a team size and like everything, yeah. Some of our midterm and long-term goals is we want to create interactive cities where people from all over the world kind of like second life or the sims can create an avatar a super hyper realistic avatar um, where you can actually walk around these cities and engage with other people and also you can go like if you haven't traveled say to tokyo before and you want to go there virtually you could actually walk around Tokyo and get an idea in the virtual world exactly what Tokyo is like, right? And have that immersive experience. Same thing is here in Toronto. We're creating Toronto right now as the very first digital interactive 3D twin in the world where people will be able to log in from anywhere in the world and create their avatar and start, you know, touring around the city. So that's some of our midterm and our longer term goals of the course is to do this for every major city around the world. Right. Right now, our, our team size internationally is just over 50 people, but we anticipate by next year, our team size is probably going to be anywhere from 250 to 400 people. So we're, we're growing very quickly because there's a high demand for these digital twin environments. And we have a lot of projects that are coming up, a lot of very big projects that are coming up for us.
guess. This is my guess, but I think、uh, the COVID 19 situation kind of like accelerated a little bit for your situation. Oh, no, I, I, you make a very good point.、Yeah. Um, I think it definitely has accelerated it、um, because even before, We've been going through a different digital revolution, right? With so many online video games that are getting more and more realistic all the time, and with video, right? And we all, all of our team has played online games and we've been involved with really high end video. And Brian himself is an amazing、uh, video producer and creator as well. But it's almost as if society is demanding that more immersive experience. But now with COVID, You're right. Everybody's at home and they're trying to figure out how do I do business online? How do I, how am I, can I be more engaging? How can I be more incentizing for the products and services that I offer? And it's definitely pushing you know, it forward much quicker than it would have before. And now people, everybody's talking about digital twins, right? How do I create a digital twin? NVIDIA just announced,、um, Jensen Hong just announced that they're creating a whole metaverse of the entire world. Right. And not just of the world, but like lots of variations. It's, he said it's going to be a thousand times bigger than the world. So, I mean, these are big players out there that are also playing in this space. And it's a huge industry, right? Pretty soon, websites are not just going to be flat web pages that you go to. You're going to go to a site and suddenly you're going to be in a 3D environment, walking around, meeting people, seeing different products, going to a, a virtual world mall, going to a performance, right? So, it's a very exciting. Uh, spot in the, in the world to be part of this 3D interactive environments. Yeah, so what are you thinking of, about the global expansion? We would like to be in every major city in the world. And when we create a digital twin of a city, I mean, let's use an example like、uh, Singapore. The government of Singapore paid $73 million to do virtual Singapore, and it took a company five years to do that, right? And、uh, the sim- this simulation that they created is not in the cloud, right? It's not using a video game engine,、uh, at least a, a relevant video game engine to render it. So, with our platform, you know, for us to create digital twins, we can do it much faster. I'd say three to four times faster, and the quality is much greater. But what we see happening whenever we create a digital twin of a city, we see working. With the local people in that city and also engaging with partners in that city and setting up a team within that city in order to create the best experience possible. So, every time we create a digital twin of a new city, I think we would create an office in that city and have, you know, work with partners in that city all around. And that would kind of be our global expansion is to, as we do twins of these cities, to set up offices there and partner with. Great people that can help us even make a better experience of that environment because local people know the culture, they know the experience, they know the other people, and they can really help us make something great. So, we, we really have, we love to partner with people, and we see there's a lot of power in partnering with other people and working with people to do something great, right? Together, we're stronger and we can do something better, right? You know, my background, I've been fascinated with computers since I was very young. I started programming when I was 11 years old. And,、uh, you know, when I was 12 years old, I wanted to become a video game designer and producer, right? And,、uh, you know, I had this fascination with computer graphics, and I never thought I would. You know, do that. I went into marketing, I went into digital media creation, I went into、um, uh, website creation, graphic design. But you know, later on in life, it brought me back to this situation. And for me, really, the drive、um, I'm part of a charitable organization and we want to do、um, some major developments to help people around the world. So for me, have, being part of a company that has explosive growth and expansion and the capability to become a multi billion dollar company, it means that there's going to be more money available to put towards the charitable pursuits. Really, for me,、um, life is about serving and helping other people, right? It, today, You know, we are a global community, and we as business leaders should take a stance that our business is not just for self promotion and for self satisfaction, but we have a global family to help, right? So, if we can do something great in business, we should change our perspective and say, what can I do to help other people? How can this business be positioned to really help society and help bring some big 
positive changes in the world, right? We're all facing major things with COVID-19 right now. You know, the water, the uh, world's still facing water shortages right there's people actually who have to walk three hours a day one way just to get water and three hours back right there's people facing starvation in Yemen so we we should you know use our business resources this is just my personal opinion to help affect a positive change right live a good life have a positive life but don't be overindulgent use it to help other people that's what we're here to do right and my teacher one of my greatest teachers in my life told me that at the, the end of knowledge, at the pursuit, at the end of knowledge, is learning to help serve other people. And really, that's what my business partner and I really strongly feel. We got together because we have a lot of philanthropic, uh, philanthropic uh, pursuits that we want to do. And that's what united us together. And this gives us a platform in order to do that as well. Plus, it's very cool to be part of. Very fun and exciting. So.